Hi, Steve. Thanks so much for being here and making the time to speak with us. Um, I'm here representing Sundara Nagarajan from IEEE Computing Now. Um, and, this is, and this issue of Computing Now is focused on data integrity and availability in storage systems. To start off, Steve, as a thought leader in this space, what are your, what are your views on the increasing demands from storage systems, um, the increasing demands for both availability and data integrity, and how storage systems, large-scale storage systems, are being able to cope with this? Well, what we've seen is that this storage systems have sort of migrated into, into sort of more specialized areas. There are the kinds that are that are des that are designed for big analytics, like the the Hadoop kind mm -hmm. of uh, uh, deployments, uh, and and they make their own trade-offs as mm -hmm. far as availability and and uh, um, um, consistency in in uh, with Hadoop. It tends to be as part of the application. Um, you know, similarly, there are things like content distribution networks now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of storage nowadays. When you get things like Netflix that are out there uh, streaming video, and again, they have completely different consistency requirements and availability requirements than traditional storage systems. And then there's the the more uh, uh, I call it big bandwidth, where uh, it's streaming inside the enterprise, doing like movies and uh, production, um, uh, oil and gas. They they all require very large bandwidth, and uh, they have specialized systems for that. But they may trade off some uh, availability characteristics for having the high bandwidth. Um, in 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 sort of the enterprise world. Uh, there we're having these deployments with very large archives, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, in in the newer virtualized environments, they're not archives. They're sort of these huge pools of shared storage, mm -hmm. and there, at least within the 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 um, um, application zone, you know, consistency is paramount. You can't give up on it like you can right. with some of the more uh, cat-based mm -hmm. systems. So that that's how I see it in general. All right, and um, moving along, another another area of um, of interest, or you know, where there is so much evolution, um, is the actual storage media choices. Um, we have the evolution with storage class memory now. There's flash, mm -hmm. disk, tape. Um, how do you envision storage architectures evolving to best to make the best choices amongst all these various options? It's really kind of interesting. Now's a time of a lot of change in the storage uh, underlying storage media over the next next uh, few years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, flash has already had a, a pretty big impact. Now, you can look at it different ways, but for, for, at least from my point of view, uh, one of the things that that Flash lets you do mm -hmm. is sort of separate high IOPS storage from high capacity storage. So um, we're starting to see this already. Uh, some of the cheapest way to, to deploy things like Flash is just embedded in the host, either with PCI cards or on the motherboard as, as, as people like, like Intel have uh, um, advocated and achieve those high IOPS out of that flash. Right. So there. so okay. now uh, using um, uh, caching technologies like like uh, uh, IO Turbine mm -hmm. um, that uh, uh, you can serve those IOPS locally, and that's a, actually a very good place uh, to serve those IOPS because. Guess what? With the new processors coming, you have so many cores there, mm -hmm. and with, virt with uh, virtual uh, uh, machine techniques, you have this ability to actually use those cores. And so, a lot of applications can be thrown a lot of I/O locally. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, you can put this out on the network as, uh, as well, and you know that's what flash array vendors are doing. But uh, consider this um, when when uh, network storage first happened, uh, you would connect with your client to the, to the storage array over the network and you got better performance. Why? Because 
you now have 100 arms working for you instead of the, the two or one or two disc arms that you had locally. Right. And um, with, if, in the flash world, that's really not so true because mm. the, you know, it, it's not IOPS bound like the, like the discs were. And in fact, you get worse performance because now you're over the network and you're not really seeing the, the advantages of, of the flash latency. So this is a, quite a big architectural change in right. a sense for how storage is being... Con right. So used, yeah. um, there's still a two order of magnitude of close to a difference between you know, uh, f enterprise flash and uh, the cheapest disk drives mm -hmm. in terms of dollars per gigabyte. So you can't put everything on flash. There's still a large call for, for, for having the things that don't fit in flash be on, on spinning media. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think really happens to the, the, the centralized storage. You know, uh, at NetApp we have a term for this, we call that flash in the host, the IOPS layer, and the flash, and I'm sorry, the, the uh, disk on the other side, we call that the capacity layer, mm -hmm. because the primary goal there is to give you good dollars per gigabyte, not only by using cheap disks, mm -hmm. uh, but also things like, like deduplication and compression, right, to use all those tricks to get the lowest dollar per gigabyte. Right, and IOPS isn't such a key characteristic it, of, right. characteristic of that capacity layer. That, mm -hmm. that, that's correct. So, mm -hmm. so now you can separate those concerns where in the past, you, you know, you couldn't separate the, the IOPS from the capacity. Now you can. Mm -hmm. You can get your IOPS at the lowest dollar per IOP locally. Right. Um, and then get your capacity at the lowest dollar per gigabyte over the network. So you're getting your performance and your capacity at an optimized dollar point That's across right. both of them. That's right. Okay. So, you know, that, that's really uh, a theme that I see playing out uh, over the next couple of years and it, and it ties in very well with the trend towards virtualization mm -hmm. because you'll see these environments with these large virtualized environments with flash locally mm -hmm. to service the IOPS of, of whatever virtual machines are thrown at them right. yet the capacity is shared right. and available to any of the machines that happen to be running that application at any point in time and so the networking capability really helps. So uh, that's where I see things going on that point. But on the availability side, of mm -hmm. course availability is paramount in those environments and, and same for uh, um, the integrity and the, and the uh, consistency. So those things are all key kind of very enterprise focused, enterprise centric right. requirements. That's right. um, uh, to uh, the other the other side of it, right, um, where there are certain applications where the data is very geographically distributed, they may not have such constraints with respect to consistency and um, and things like that. Where do you see that evolving? Is that um, a separate trend, or how do they tie together? Um, that, that is a separate trend, right? Mm -hmm. um, because they they don't have those kinds of uh, requirements. Um, you know, they may use, uh, 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 they don't care about consistency, they'll use caching techniques without the consistency constraints so mm -hmm. they don't have to worry about it, it'll be application manage mm -hmm. managed. It may contain flash, it may contain disks, it depends on the application. Um, if you're interested in, in very fine-grained streaming a lot of things at once, then you might want a little bit more flash, but right. if you're, you're into long, high-resolution uh, movies, and you just you know you might stream that off of discs. There'll be plenty of different uh, uh, architectures that come out in those those situations. Mm -hmm. And similarly for the Hadoop area, mm -hmm. um, you know they have uh, depending on the application, you may manage the consistency different ways. Right. So. Um, uh, I think there's going to be a you know a thousand uh, flowers blooming here, <laughs> and we'll, we'll, it'll be really interesting over the next uh, uh, couple of years through the through the remainder of the decade. Um, sounds good, Steve. One one question, kind of related to storage efficiency and how storage efficiency, just given the volumes of data and how data is growing, um, the expectations that it's ubiquitous and that you should be able to get storage efficiency, you know, in a very large scale environment as well. Um, what are your thoughts on um, on that front? Well, 
as I was saying, you know, when you think about this now, this new separation between the IOPS and the capacity, mm -hmm. you know, in the capacity layer, because you're not, you're no longer concerned about, you know, the lowest latency service. Right. You have you have some time to think, mm -hmm. and there's all sorts of ways that you can crunch down the data. You know, the kinds of things that we do today are really only the tip of the iceberg. There. Are there are uh, technologies out there that will go into uh, pictures or video and do f format dependent um, compression mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and even deduplication. And those are the sorts of things that, that I expect to be uh, hallmarks of that capacity layer going forward. There'll be lots more interesting techniques in there. So there, there could be various techniques, especially because the, the constraint of being IOPS focused has been removed from the storage, from that capacity tier. There, there's a wider range of options available to really crunch sure. down the data. It's not just the options to, to, uh, to crunch down the data, mm -hmm. but you, can, you have choices of, as to the medium that you can put it on. Depending on the mm -hmm. service level that you're after, you can, for example, uh, if you're willing to take some delay before getting your first bite, you can put it on tape mm -hmm. automatically. It's a little harder to duplicate there, but um, you know you can still you can still do things like that. Um, I think a lot of this is going to be uh, tied together by having a service level objective associated with every piece of data. So if you have a piece of data that that has uh, a very stringent service level, it will tend to migrate towards uh, the, the, the flash cache. Mm -hmm. or, or, or more towards the IOPS More for the IOPS layer. layer. Mm -hmm. If you have things that have a very loose uh, 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 service level objective, when they're not being used, they can tend to drift down towards, towards the more crunched down parts of the the, the capacity layer, and you know, those those new sort of service level orientation, it it, it it's a it's a, a newer concept in data management. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what's really going to um, uh, help things when you're managing data data at scale, mm -hmm. and. You know, it also applies to things like uh, availability and consistency because you shouldn't think as a service level objective as just about performance. It's also about what availability you want. It's also about what consistency you want. It's, so so uh, having those appropriate service levels enable you to maximize the efficiency from a system that has that has these various layers right. and has these various different components that can be tied together to meet that objective. Right, and, and, and once you have this label on every piece of data, the system actually has the wherewithal mm -hmm. uh, to, to make it measurable, right? And, and to, to make it happen automatically, mm -hmm. right? So, and, and the measurability part is key because a service level is nothing if it just means, you know, turn on that feature. It's what does that mean, right? What right. you really want is these things to say, I, I objectively can measure that I'm meeting my service level objective or not. And, and, and I think that's one of the, the newer things in this industry.